Hello and welcome. My name is Sharon Otnes, and I'm the founder of Design Your Beautiful Life. And Design Your Beautiful Life is where we create a life we don't need to escape from. I started these wellness chats, um, oh gosh, close, well, not a year, six months or so ago, um, to really highlight some of the wonderful um, health practitioners that I've had the honor of meeting over the last 10 years or so that I've been in holistic health. And I just wanted to be able to share their expertise out in the world a little more so that um, you can, you know, really kind of get a, an overview of who some of these people are and where they might fit into your wellness lifestyle. And when I speak of wellness, I want to make sure we understand, I, I, I go to around the whole wellness wheel. So it's not just one thing. It obviously encompasses many facets of wellness. And that's everything to do from your spirituality, your relationships. Yes, what's on the end of your fork, um, how you exercise, how you, you know, sort of have, how do you navigate through the world? Um, in all the facets so that you're truly well. And today, today I really am excited about our guest. Um, this one is um, kind of near and dear to my heart in particular. Hi, Don. Um, Hi. Near and dear to my heart in particular because we're talking about women and alcohol. Um, and I wanna make it clear, I, I am a woman in recovery, um, 19 years. But that isn't really what this conversation is about. Um, this is about your health and how alcohol can um, play into that. Okay. So first of all, let me introduce Dawn. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, she's a licensed naturopathic doctor. She's a certified eating disorder specialist. She's out of Tucson, Arizona. Um, Dawn and I actually met through social media, as so many of our, our, our acquaintances now meet, um, in a, a kind of a new platform, Clubhouse. And um, it, was, it was very clear to me from the beginning that it was a great place for those of us in recovery to kind of be able to meet up, especially in the pandemic when, you know, in-person meetings weren't as possible. But that's how Don and I met. And we, um, we worked together for a while doing a wellness um, in recovery group. Um, and Dawn is still very much there doing her um, expertise of eating disorders. So um, let's see, you specialize in the treatment of trauma and addictions. Um, the other one you did for eating disorder treatment, as we discussed, you have a private telepath or excuse me, telehealth practice. Mm -hmm. um, and to be something that a lot of people are going to, which is exciting. So we have access to each other um, and your integrative recovery medicine is the name of your business, right? Yep. Okay. So you combine functional testing and naturopathic medicine to support people with mental health and addiction recovery. Um, and when she's not working, I think she's a crack up. She does all these fun TikTok videos that I so enjoy watching. <laughs> and you look. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, got to watch your travels over the summer, so that was fun. Um, that's that's part of the beauty of social media, I think, is we get to see little snippets into other people's lives. So let's jump in. Let's jump okay. in and talk. About, let's do it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, reading the headlines, of course, it's hard to even, you know, be able to read news now without hearing these headlines, in fact, of you know, the amazing amount of people that are suffering, not only from addictions, especially through the pandemic, but what really stuck out at me was the amount of women that are drinking much more heavily. We don't have to talk about it being an addiction even at this point, you know, it's just, we're, we're using alcohol, I think, as a stress reliever, which it's excellent for in the short term, right? Right, um, for sure. But, but seeing, seeing the amounts of uh, and percentages, if you will, of people that are, are drinking much more heavily now really is concerning me. 
and I'm, 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 I'm assuming it's concerning you too. So that's why I really wanted to have this conversation is just that women and men don't metabolize alcohols the same way. Um, so I think as women, we just, and breast cancer and all kinds of things I know we'll, you'll be talking about, uh, but I just really wanted to open this up for a conversation around um, our health and alcohol and, you know, maybe take some of the, um, some of the things away that we've been fed through corporations and media of how, oh, no, it's fine for you, you know, like, go ahead and drink. <laughs> so let's I talk. Agree. Yeah, I think I think a good place to start is uh, just share what happened recently on TikTok with with uh, a video that I had. So I had a video go viral just a couple weeks ago. And it really drove home to me the just it well uh, let me share it with you and, and then we can talk about like what it demonstrates so i posted a video sharing that there's been increased drinking over uh the pandemic and then uh i had a follow-up video about because one of the the viewers had asked well define what heavy drinking is because there's an increase in heavy drinking so i shared that the cdc defines heavy drinking as Eight, eight drinks a week for women or more, and 15 drinks or more a week for men. And that got so much traction. I just looked yesterday, there were 9,000 comments on this video and wow. two and a half million views, right? And really what the gist of it was, was the comments were people being surprised. I mean, there was a lot of bravado too, but it really drives home like, how um, culturally heavy drinking is accepted. Uh, so I think there's a lot of work to do there. I mean, I, I get it. it. It also, you know, it, there are a lot of college students who commented on that, but there are people of all stripes who, who made comments on that video. And I really, I really feel like it, it is important. And just getting that message across, I think, was helpful because there are people who come in and like sincere, they seem to be sincere and surprised that that's considered heavy drinking. Um, so I really hope that people did, some people did receive that as uh, maybe this, this is, maybe drinking this much isn't such a good idea. And as you know, I'm so interested in health and uh, I just see that there's a big disconnect between, I mean, people, in my experience, a lot of people really strive to be healthy and they do things to be healthy, but they often don't realize like the impact that alcohol has on their health. And so I love to do education around that. Yeah. So that's, that's really what this is all about. You know, um, we, 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 we've been fed so long and certainly I, you know, I, I perked up on it, <laughs> you know, that, Oh, yeah. little red wine is fine this is good, you know, um, but, and don't even get me started on the mommy wine culture of, you know, how can you possibly get through, mm -hmm. you know, having your kids um, without drinking. Um, so, you know, it, those messages just, you know, keep coming at us and they, they normalize, they normalize the fact that we're mm -hmm. drinking more. Um, right. It's just a dangerous slope. So let's talk a little bit about the health aspects of, you know, drinking with women. Yeah. And I, I also want to share, like, for me, I, I'll, I mean, I'll be forthcoming. I have always enjoyed having drinks. I mean, whether it's, you know, wine, I love tequila. I mean, I, I really enjoy drinking. However, over this last year, as I've had an opportunity to really, like, dig into the research and because what I was doing was since I was transitioning into having a private practice, I was doing research to, to write articles and also to have content for social media. And the more I read, I was like, oh crap, you know, this isn't congruent with how I want to uh, support my health. I, and, and so I guess I was, I was one of those people I just mentioned, you know, not really getting that you know, this is an important part of health um, is to reduce alcohol or, or avoid alcohol altogether. And so I have to say that this last year when I finally came to that conclusion, I think at this point I, I've had four drinks this year and I have to be honest, like it was like, eh, you know, each time I had one because 
I just realized how much of an impact, I mean, we can start with sleep. I mean, a lot of people notice like alcohol has an impact on their sleep. And the reason is it's sedating. And then when the sedate, the sedation type effects wear off, you're awake. Um, so we know well, that that can disrupt our sleep. Yeah. And I'll interject real quickly. My own personal story yeah. is that I started using that glass of wine at night for sleep. And I, right. I know Which, now that it helps you fall asleep. Well, right. Right. It sedates you. However, we know it impacts sleep architecture. So uh, it really impacts the ability to create REM sleep. And so if you don't have REM sleep, that's going to impact your ability to do processing and it impacts your, your ability to, well, it impacts your brain overall. I mean, definitely with memories, but also as far as functioning of your brain. And I think as we age, I don't know if younger people are so concerned about this, but like, as far as brain health, like I, that's something that I think about frequently and I'm sure you do too. And like, we know if you're not getting good sleep, it's going to impact your brain. And also like, we know that, that drinking alcohol increases the risk for Alzheimer's and dementia. And so, I mean, th those are things that I think people need to have more awareness about. Yeah, and that's really, again, that's what this conversation is about. It's just like being just that little bit more aware. Education. And mm -hmm. education, taking a look, you know, at when you're having a drink, you know. Social fun, um, you know, uh, the taste, you know, we're pairing it with food. I mean, there's many, many, many reasons that you drink. And, and you know, for the most part, you're probably fine. But I think just being aware of, okay, I've had one, I got the flavor, you know, I got the fun. Do I need to continue? Right? Yeah. Um, and that it, it is an option to opt out too. Like you can still have a good time. If you haven't experienced that, um, you might not realize that that's an option, you know, because maybe you're just so used to if you go to a restaurant or if you're with friends or if you go to a concert. And I encourage people to like try without, see how it goes. It's probably going to yeah. be just great. It might yeah. even be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it is into our culture. And you're right. I mean, that was one of the points I was going to bring up, but since you did it already, this is great. Um, yes. Um, you know, there's so many ways you can participate in um, maybe taking a week off, a month off, and just see how do you feel, you know, like a little experiment. How does that make you feel? And I know so many people that have done it are like, wow, you know, this is happening better, this is happening better, this is happening better, um, you know, I may or may not go back to it. So, you know, I think it's just that, again, another another sign of awareness of how has it been, you know, doing with your body, and especially as you get older, you know, well, this is a little bit older um, demographic that, that I work with. So, you know, it, what worked in your 20s and 30s just may not be working anymore. I agree. And I also, I've heard that from a lot of people too, where they are uh, patients I've worked with, they join a program where maybe they do a month off, um, like sober October or that kind of thing. And they do have those realizations. And uh, I, I think it's good to challenge a lot of the behaviors that we just do automatically. We don't really think about so much and just, just be curious about that. Uh, it's also important to know, you know, our brains really adjust to uh, substances, also behaviors too, but, but substances. So for instance, like coffee, let's say you get up and you have coffee first thing in the morning every day, your brain is going to react in a way that it's going to act like more tired. You know, it's going to like crank up like the kind of the crankiness, the tiredness so that it gets that coffee because it's used to it. And the same thing is for alcohol too. When people, they use uh, alcohol at the end of the day to unwind after work, their brain catches on to that. And so it's going to crank up the agitation. It's going to crank up the anxiety until it gets that, that alcohol. So I want people to know that they need to give it a little while so that their brains can readjust without that. And of course, there are people who do have like a physiological dependence. So if you have symptoms of withdrawal, um, you definitely want to seek out professional help with that because that that obviously can be life-threatening maybe not obviously maybe not everybody knows that but it absolutely can be life-threatening they might need some help with that yes for sure and i think that is something that um, is not talked about enough 
is that um, withdrawing, mm -hmm. if you've been drinking, especially withdrawing from alcohol can be life threatening on your own. So, yeah, yep. you can reach out to either one for a quick little, um, you know, maybe some, some ways to uh, connect with somebody if that's the case. Um, so let's talk about how alcohol is me metabolized differently in women. Yeah, so that's a really, that's another thing a lot of people didn't realize. Uh, a lot of the comments were like, hey, that's sexist, you know, in that TikTok video, like, wait, the CDC doesn't let women drink as much as men or like women are like, their women are like, I can out drink anybody, any guy and this kind of thing. That might be the case, but <laughs> the research shows that, so, so generally there are a few things. So um, typically, when you look at the average woman versus the average man, on average, you know, a woman's going to be smaller, have different body composition. So there's that. But when you control for that, if you take the same size woman, same size man, uh, a woman is going to have a higher blood alcohol content level because of other things going on, including how the alcohol is absorbed in her stomach. And then also hormones. And we know hormones make a difference. So, I mean, there's going to be... Um, individual variation on this, but it is, this is significant because a few things. One, um, women are going to get intoxicated faster. And the other thing, it's going to create damage quicker. In fact, there's uh, some research that shows, and this is really, this is actually kind of recent research. I remember seeing this earlier this year that uh, there, there's, some surprise in the medical community because young women are getting diagnosed. I mean, women in their 30s, like young women, um, not super heavy drinkers, but uh, they're getting diagnosed with cirrhosis at a very young age, whereas you, we usually think of that as like very progressed. Um, and, uh, you know, some of these women are requiring liver transplants. And so yeah. it, it's, I think it's shocking. People don't often realize like, this stuff can creep up on you. You don't real. there might not be symptoms. And then next thing you know, you're, you're having problems. Um, and then the other thing kind of related to that is that, uh, you know, even when women stop drinking, they're still at a higher risk of cirrhosis compared to a man. And again, it's because the, uh, their, their bodies just uh, metabolize the alcohol differently. It's just part of who we are. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like we, we like to say everything's equal, but there are some things that just physiology wise aren't. So, you know, again, right, awareness, right. Like, like be aware of that fact. Right. And then take measures accordingly. Um, yeah. You know, and, and when you talk about health, too, I think back, you know, I say my definitely my my danger zone in alcohol came in my mid 40s. I know now that I was also going through some definite hormone changes. And unfortunately, because of the alcohol use I was doing at the time, not really wanting to go to the doctor, not, you know, like, eh, I don't want to have to talk to him about this stuff, right? Um, I realized that I did myself mm -hmm. a real disservice well in not really getting maybe some hormonal help that I could have had at the time. Is that making sense? So. It, you know, it's it kind is. of masking something. Yeah, that, that's not uncommon. So you think about, I, I really think about alcohol use. I mean, there is that culture component, but there's also, uh, I mean, people are using it to medicate. And so they're medicating stress, but also I mean, they're medicating like medical issues, including like hormone imbalances, because like you, you shared, um, it's not uncommon as people start to have those hormonal imbalances as they go through the perimenopausal years, um, the alcohol can take the edge off. It can help with that. Whereas really looking at the underlying issues and getting a full workup, the kind of stuff that I really enjoy doing with people, um, that can be more, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be more lasting. It's really going to like address those, those issues and it's going to be more healing. So, yeah, I think so often, like it's unfortunate. I mean, it, it, alcohol is an effective band-aid for a lot of things 
And unfortunately, yeah. you know, it has all these consequences to it too. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was reading one of your, um, your blog posts and I thought it was fascinating. And so, because I talk a lot about food and, you know, your gut and all of that, um, you did an mm -hmm. article on food sensitivity and alcohol. Can you chat a little bit about that? Because mm. I think that's something that people can speak to yeah. perhaps. Yeah. So coming back to really what I was thinking about as far as like, well, when I was exploring, well, how does alcohol, and I look at other substances too, but I know the other focus of this talk is alcohol, but I was really interested in, well, how does alcohol affect the different um, functionings that we know are like core to foundational to health? And, you know, there's so much information about how, I mean, it's been so cool to see, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, just all the research that's been coming out about gut health and how that is at the root of our brain health and all chronic illness and everything else. Yeah, everything. And so I was really curious, well, how does uh, alcohol impact that? And alcohol does, is not a good thing for it. And so what we do know is that drinking alcohol um, does impact the the microbiome in the, the gut and it also disrupts the integrity of the gut too and so you know for those of us that are holistic practitioners we do know that uh, food sensitivities can be a, a, a result of those things and those are kind of insidious too because they can cause all sorts of symptoms that we don't really relate necessarily to food sensitivities so they could contribute to like chronic inflammation, increasing inflammation in the body. So it could be like body aches, um, could be joint aches. It could be, uh, I mean, really there's so much information about inflammation. It could be like headaches, it could be migraines. So anyway, to answer your question, there, alcohol can be a piece of that, um, of that condition happening. It can be, it also could be an important part, you know, pulling that out for people who have those issues uh, to really help the gut heal so that you can reduce inflammation and you can have improvement in gut health. Yeah. And again, that gut, good gut health really affects your entire life. It really does. Yeah, so, it does. There's no question. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about potential withdrawal, so I don't think we need to go there anymore. One of the things that I would love to leave people with, women in particular that are watching, is let's be proactive. So you just did a real fun, um, I guess it was a reel, I, I'm not sure if it was TikTok as well, um, on just like, what, 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 how can we, you know, relieve some of that stress, relieve some of the reasons that we, you know, jump into having that glass of wine instead of having that glass of wine or drink. So let's talk a little bit about that. What, what are some of your top tips? So as you know, I love supplements. Um, so I do look at supplements as a great tool for people. Um, some of my favorites would be like, um, Lavender, passion flower, uh, L-theanine uh, is, is a great amino acid. It's that amino acid in green tea that helps with calming. I've used that a lot with many, many people to help with uh, stress reduction. So I, I think that would be part of the plan that I would recommend for somebody is to have those other tools as they start to uh, decrease their alcohol or cease alcohol use if that's a desire of theirs. And really, again, it's helping that brain come back into balance too, like I mentioned earlier. So especially in that initial period, it might be just a little more difficult. And so that could possibly take the edge off. Uh, I know you hear it everywhere and it's really true, breathing, you know, as far as like breathing techniques. Uh, and just oh, no, the, the thing to remember is, this, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, people can reach out to you as far as techniques and, and you definitely see that quite a bit on, um, in the wellness sphere. However, we do know that breathing is a nice way to modulate the nervous system really quickly in the moment you always have it. So breathing techniques, 
Uh, and then, I mean, I could go on and on actually, Sharon, uh, making sure you're getting enough sleep and then uh, exercise is really important too. We know that exercise is super important to help with uh, stress reduction and those stress hormones. Yeah, for sure. And uh, one of my favorite new things, because I, I love to kind of add new things in as I go, um, and I, I started doing a gratitude practice. And so you can do that a couple different ways. I sort of landed on one that works best for me, but, um, and these are quick. There, you could do like a five minute gratitude practice in the morning. Um, I use a t um, insight timer a lot. So there's a lot of just little quick, quick little practices. Kind of helps rewire your brain. The other one, and this is the one I've sort of landed on because I'm trying so hard to make sure that my sleep is good, is I end up doing um, just three, three things I'm grateful for, for the day. And that sort of kind of feeds into my want and need of doing some sort of journaling. And this just sort of helps do both of those things because it's something that was simple that I could make habit. And that was, that was my goal. So. And there's great research on that too. And you can feel it in your body, right? Like when you shift from like, you know, maybe agitation or you're resentful. Um, and then once you start to tap into that gratitude appreciation, like I can feel the change, the shift, and it happens really quick. And I've been doing that uh, end of the day gratitude list with my younger daughter for years and years. That's just part of tucking her in at night. I think it's, it's easy for kids. It's just getting into that habit, into that routine. And journaling yeah. is such a great way to do that too. People love journaling once they get started with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, for me, it was just somehow, some way making it a habit and I tried all different kinds. <laughs> this is finally sticking. So <laughs> it's all good, but yeah, I love that nice. you do that with your daughter. It's a beautiful habit that'll last her forever. Right. Yeah, I think it's a good oh, way to goodness. end the day. For sure. And, that, you know, and that's, I think that's what, what it's done for me is that you write. There's so many things that happen to us during a day, you know, and you can sit and be grumbly and grievances. And, and I, so it makes me stop for a moment and go, okay, but what something good that happened, you know, as little as it might have been, what was something wonderful and good? And so it just puts you in a different mindset. Yeah, changes everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, Don, I know we could go on forever. Um, what are some kind of last minute things that you'd like people to think about or women of just maybe looking at things a little differently, being more aware? Be curious and ch challenge things that are a given. Uh, I think it's so often that we get in routine, we get into a rut, we make assumptions. And the more that we can just explore, uh, I think the more fulfilling life can be. So I encourage people to just check things out. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, just just be curious. So um, with that, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. I so appreciate it. Um, everybody, you can find Dawn on, on Instagram. That's, she's, she's right there. She always posts just really good content. It's always that. Thank you. And I think that helps make it go down a little easier as well. And so <laughs> I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. All right, take care. Bye.